Hello and uh, welcome. My name is Karol Kioski. I'm from General Bytes and I will show you how to configure your new BATM2 machine. Please make sure that you already have seen uh, BATM2 unboxing video from 2017 before you continue. Okay, so we already unpacked the machine and we have it we have it ready. On computer I will also open the Chrome browser. Uh, Chrome browser is a browser which for which we test our software but it should work also with Firefox and Safari and also on your iPhone and Android phone. But uh, Chrome is something where we test our software in. So let's go to ATM server. So I'm putting now the address of the BATM server uh, you uh, definitely have a different uh, address uh, you will receive that by email if you ask us to enlist you on your on our server if you want to uh, connect to your own server uh, which you installed you have to put their different IP address okay so let's hit enter it says this connection is not private it doesn't like that the certificate is self-signed that is okay so I clicked on advanced and clicked on proceed okay so here we are let's uh, log in okay uh, video okay so we just logged in uh, you can see here um, you can you can see here that we logged in under the user video if you want to change password uh, here it is uh, here is a list of terminals here's uh, here are another options which we will go through uh, later on uh, and here you can see also for example important information that is the version number of the server software let's uh, let's uh, see what is in the list of terminals so we are already here we see that uh, we have here two machines you will probably have only one machine here uh, this status icon means that the machine is ready to be paired meaning that the machine with the serial number like this didn't try to connect to server yet so this means that uh, probably you didn't start the machine yet uh, or you entered the invalid IP address basically the machine uh, has difficulties to connect to the server and talk to him here uh, this is actually our machine which we which we have uh, which we have in the camera view here is uh, 305 uh, I already played with that machine uh, but uh, this red icon means that uh, there is no connection uh, from the terminal to the server so terminal when you start it up uh, it should be pinging server but uh, every I don't know 15 seconds so here server indicates that the terminal is not talking uh, to a server uh, here we have another uh, another information something like how much is there right now before how much cash is there right now before customer pressed uh, by bitcoins uh, so that is something which we call balance uh, you can see that for test purposes I am using the uh, check crown uh, currency but uh, it's this it was the same with USD or uh, with euro and other currencies here you can see how much was there inserted so far how much uh, bitcoins was bought so far uh, here is the location where the machine is uh, placed uh, here is the ping duration uh, actually it's the last ping uh, duration so how long it takes for machine to send message to the server and receive the response back uh, here is written uh, when the machine was connected last time it shows uh, somewhere today okay so let me start the machine
So I don't know if it's visible, but here here is already already some uh, green lights you can see. But the computer is not starting up. I did this intentionally because the, you might uh, face this too, and uh, you have to basically make sure that you also powered on the computer which is inside of the machine. Let me let me turn it on. So there is a power switch also on the motherboard next to the next to the cable where the power goes in into the computer. So now the ATM is booting up. Uh, I'll take uh, take out the keys because I don't like uh, the moving. Okay, so now the ATM uh, says no internet, which error out of order, error no internet, which means also two things. One is that it has no internet connection or the server refuses to talk to to your machine. Uh, sometimes uh, customer writes, customers uh, write us that uh, they see this error but they already set up the Wi-Fi and internet is working. Uh, in 99% of the cases it means that you are expecting us uh, to enlist you on our server but you didn't ask us to do so. So please send us, send us email at sales at generalbias.com uh, and state there your name and your serial number and that you want to be enlisted on our server. On our server you can be you can we can operate the server for you free of charge for first uh, 30 days so we help you to start operating the machine as quickly as possible when you receive it and after one month we start to charge you 0.5% so half percent of all cash inserted into the machine you can switch to your own server anytime you want uh, within 14 days or after 60 days or any time you really anytime you want and if you switch to your own server which you install for example on digitalocean.com uh, then you don't pay us this uh, service fee 0% uh, sorry half percent uh, you don't pay us this service fee you don't pay us anything you are on your own but we still uh, still provide the support for you and the software upgrades uh, for your machine. Software upgrades we provide uh, in average 2.5 new releases uh, per month. So our machine has started up and it's already uh, already went to the screensaver. Uh, let's uh, let's refresh the page to to see if uh, that's also reflected on our our server page so you can see it's the machine is now online if you if you hold the mouse here you can also see what the version is there uh, you can see that there is a version from uh, from January pretty old uh, version usually when we ship you a machine you get the machine with the old stable software but we recommend you to upgrade immediately before you start configuring the machine here is a shortcut for uh, for jumping into transactions and here we can do various actions including the upgrading of the terminals. So let's let's upgrade uh, terminal first. So do you want to upgrade to this version from this version? Yes, we want to. Okay, so this will take a little bit of time. Basically the the terminal is uh, pinging uh, server f every 15 seconds and server will say okay so here is a new release uh, you should upgrade to and the uh, machine will upgrade to it uh, meanwhile while, th while this is happening uh, and the download process is in place uh, let me show you the details or the what is in the menu here so uh, you, okay so machine just upgraded uh, we, we saw the uh, the machine to reboot or to restart the software let's uh, reload let's see here yes and we can see that it's uh, on uh, June's, uh, June's release uh, it's possible to also upgrade uh, terminal from the SSH command line on server but uh, 
through the browser is more convenient. You can also see that the ping duration uh, changes uh, time to time. So let me explain you the menu on the left side. So here we have a list of terminals, crypto settings, there we set uh, the margin or which, uh, which wallet uh, the ATM will be connected to and other stuff, you will get to that. Discount codes, you can give uh, different customers different exchange rate, for example to VIP customers or the customers uh, to which you gave some discount coupon. We have notification policies here. Here you can set up, uh, for example, that uh, when transaction succeeds, it's going to send you an email, or if it fails, it will send you, let's say, uh, SMS, right? So you can write here plus, uh, I don't know, 420 777, and it's gonna send, uh, send you SMS when something fails. Uh, we can add uh, also other rules into the notifications. For example, uh, you get uh, you, you can get notification when there is too much cash uh, in the machine, or you can get notification when the machine is offline for um, uh, for more than one hour. Uh, you get uh, notification when when there is any error or. Uh, you can also get notification when somebody clears counters, for example, somebody collects cash from the machine. Uh, you get the SMS uh, stacker manipulation, stacker is the cash box. Yeah, and uh, for example, also you can get notification when somebody registers on the machine that that we really want. Uh, we, we pro you as a team operator, you you want to get the SMS so when something when somebody wants to register so you can click on your mobile approve him on a server immediately okay so next uh, we have here locations so here you on, on the system you you can track uh, at which location ma um, machine was uh, from what time to what time or to from which date to which date uh, also, you can you can manage skins here, uh, skinning uh, and uh, sprites and videos and look and feel uh, is uh, basically just uh, just a way how you can customize the look of the user interface on the machine. So, for example, in skins, uh, when we want to let's say create a new skin, uh, you can create a new welcome logo which is you can change this welcome logo you can change also colors of the background you can change color of the buttons uh, you can also put in your own video help video for showing how how the customer should proceed you can also put in the map uh, for example if there is an error on the on the ATM you can show a map where are other of your ATMs. Here is the administration of the person, so you can you can have multiple employees accessing the system. Uh, identities here here are customers here are actually identities of your customers. So here you approve them. Here you can look uh, on uh, how many uh, transactions ha have they made, uh, where and why. Oh, why not? Probably, but uh, you can see you can see also also the limits uh, which they made. Uh, the, you can set up their uh, discounts in the billing. Uh, here we bill you. Uh, here we bill you for for the service fee. Uh, if you are running your own server, here it, uh, you will not see here this option. Uh, in the help, uh, there are a couple of. Uh, couple of examples for example you can have your own widget on your own web page which is showing uh, the actual price on the ATM right now uh, some help uh, how to set up uh, how to set up ethereum wallet uh, and configuration of the connections uh, connections is a third pa third party product for uh, uh, for compliance with FinCEN uh, this is optional optional component. So anyway, so let's go to the terminal. Let's uh, 
let's click on the terminal and here we have a couple of options we can uh, see the transactions the list of transactions uh, that will be easy uh, there is a w just one transaction from yesterday which I made but let's uh, let's do a one transaction now uh, let me get some cash So first I have to scan the QR code uh, of the Bitcoin address of my wallet. Okay, so now I can insert cash. Okay, so it just followed uh, 200 crowns. You can see that uh, here is 200 crowns and Still, I didn't finish the transaction yet. All right, to finish the transaction, I have to, I have to press uh, buy bitcoins. So now, now the server processed the request. So let me, let me rephrase that. It should be here zero, and here sh it should be uh, three hundred. Okay, you see that uh, in total it swallowed uh, three hundred and. And the balance is now zero because that balance was transferred to the transaction. And let's see the list of transactions. Okay, so we here we have 200, uh, 200 uh, check crowns was converted to the crypto like this. Uh, and uh, this is the destination address to which uh, the bitcoins are supposed to go. And how did it end up? Okay, it's a green light. It's completed. It means. Uh, that it's finished and uh, the buy exchange strategy used was number zero. I will explain what the exchange strategies are later but uh, for now that should be sufficient. You can also export the export the transactions into CSV if you want to do some more calculations around it uh, you can always use uh, Excel to to process that. Uh, also, we you have here analytics. Okay, so right now we didn't do much transactions, right? Yesterday we did 100 and today we did 200. Uh, it's, uh, it's it doesn't show uh, it doesn't show how much uh, it doesn't show much because we didn't have a volume, but uh, it will be handy when you have there are lots of transactions. You can click from uh, from 2017 every month, and in every month you, you see every day. You can see how much was in, how much was out. Uh, if you have a two-way machine, one-way machine is always uh, just by in. You can see, for example, that uh, this much was in check crowns, and another another I don't know. Let's say 2,000 check crowns was inserted in a euro. Okay. Uh, here is also events. You can always uh, always debug what was really happening on the machine. Machine uh, logs everything what's happening there. So, for example, here you can see that uh, somebody entered the destination address screen. Then he scanned this uh, address. Then he inserted uh, the 200 banknote. The 200 banknote was stacked into the stacker. And after that, he submitted the transaction, uh, which had this local transaction ID. And on local transaction ID is an ID of the transaction, which is but which is unique only to one machine. Uh, okay, so he requested to change 200 to uh, to this uh, Bitcoin value, and uh, done. Screen uh, finished. Here you can see lots of uh, different things. You can see also that the terminal connected with the new version. You can see that before it connected with the old version. Let's go up. Also, I wanted to show that uh, the transaction ID. Sometimes you will want us to investigate some transaction. So please tell us the remote transaction ID. This is uh, transaction ID which is unique to each server. 
So every transaction on that server will have just a uh, unique, uh, unique this ID. Don't give us the local transaction IDs. Those are only for the terminals and are only for the bugging purposes. Let's uh, let's continue on. Here is the cash uh, management. So you can you can see here how much is in the cash box in the acceptor cash box. Uh, there is uh, one banknote of 100 uh, and one banknote of 200 in total 300 banknotes. Uh, in banknote history you can also see the each individual banknote how it was inserted in the time. So if you want to debug somebody is telling you that he inserted uh, five thousands you don't have to you don't have to go through events but you can all look into the banknote history and you will see what the actual order was of the banknotes. Also you have here cash collections so we didn't collect cash yet uh, but uh, basically when when you when you take out the cash and uh, from the cash box uh, the cash collection actually happens and it creates a record here and you will see how much uh, how much your guy uh, took money from the machine uh, and how many was there 100 100 uh, I don't know, hundred dollar banknotes. How many there was? Uh, I don't know, one dollar banknotes, etc. And here we have also actions. Uh, important things are the upgrade that we already covered. Duplicate uh, terminal is a handy feature when you have multiple terminals. Uh, for example, you have one and you bought a second, and you just want to copy the configuration of the first one. You click on duplicate terminal. I want to create copy of the configuration for the second uh, terminal, and you can press BATM1 or on to 2 I don't know, and uh, 18. And uh, that's it. And you create on, you click on create, and it's gonna just create a new terminal. We will not do that right now, but uh, it's really handy when you have more machines. Uh, we can clear also terminal balance. Uh, for example, I don't know, uh, somebody inserted the cash, uh, it, uh, it was in the balance, uh, then the ter terminal connection went down and the uh, customer left the place. So usually the server will clear the transactions, uh, server will take those, let's say that he customer managed to insert just $100 uh, inside of the machine, then the internet connection went down and he left the place server will take those uh, after 10 minutes it will take those hundred uh, dollars and it will conver convert them automatically to Bitcoin and send it to the customer so mostly you don't receive a phone call from such customer because he already gets those bitcoins before he manages to call you uh, you can but sometimes uh, he says I don't want to convert it uh, so you can clear uh, you can uh, click on clear terminal balance here uh, and it's also it's also here terminal balance clearing short counters is basically the cash collection I was talking about that when somebody takes out the cash from the machine he can either do that manually on the terminal or if he forgets and that happens uh, you can do that also remotely here so let's uh, let's do it for example now no 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 let's leave it let's leave it and I'll I'll show you it I'll show it later here and this is also important uh, here you display here's displayed what the actual exchange rate is which is displayed on the screen right now uh, not right now but here is information when it was displayed so right now it's 12.05 but if we refresh the refresh the page you can see it, uh, it got updated so so it's saying that uh, that this was displayed on the screen I recommend you to really calculate it when you are configuring it really calculate that you didn't do any mistake, that you are really making profit, that the price here is not below the price for which you are buying or you bought the bitcoins. Uh, here is information about the anonymous customer limits. You can, because you can set how much uh, how much cash is possible to uh, 
to buy anonymously on the machine uh, in the last hour, in a day, per month. Uh, we will get to that when we will be talking about AML and KYC. Counters. In counters, uh, counters is something uh, where uh, where you uh, where you can where it's rec counters are basically the counters uh, which are increasing with every banknote or every transaction which is going out, and uh, these long counters they increase increase always during the lifetime of the machine. These short counters you can this you can clear. Uh, and uh, and uh, every time you do the cash collection, this one zeroes. I said here that this is for the lifetime of the machine. That's not correct. It's for the lifetime of the server because these values are all stored on server. Actually, the whole configuration is stored on server. On the terminal is saved only the IP address of the server and very few more information. So let's go down here uh, here we can see uh, more detailed information the serial number of the machine the software version we can also give a name to our terminal let's call it uh, video uh, this is uh, handy when you uh, this is helpful where when you have let's say 20 machines and you receive SMS that some transaction failed and it's uh, machine number uh, 254 and and you don't know which one it is so here you can put a short name which will be in that SMS later on and you will know that which location it is or which machine it is uh, IP address whitelist uh, here you can here you can set the IP address of your terminal uh, so the server will talk only to a terminal which will which is connecting to the server from this IP address. This for example protects you when somebody wants to if in case somebody will move the ATM from the location somewhere else the server will refuse to talk to the terminal. So terminal will not be able to ask for conversion of uh, of cash to the to the crypto for example. Uh, mostly customers leave this empty because uh, they, they want to set it up really later on when, when machine is at the location and everything is working. Here is a uh, network information. We can see that was the local IP address of the machine in the shop and what is the name of the Wi-Fi network to which it is connected. Uh, please understand that this IP address you cannot use here because here you should use the public IP address of the location where the ATM is. This is the local IP address in the shop. Shared secret hash is something which we send you by email when, when, you, when you receive uh, the machine. Administration key here, this one you can leave empty. If you leave it, if you set it empty, it means that you want to use the default one which you received uh, from, us, uh, from us by email. Or you can set here your own. I recommend you to set here your own only when you already have the machine at the location don't touch this before because sometimes uh, customers they lock them uh, when they when for example they change the administration key but uh, accidentally but then uh, they don't have the QR code for it and they already moved the machine to the new location so the machine at the new location doesn't have access to the internet uh, because they 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 cannot set up the Wi-Fi they cannot access it with the administration Anyway, so uh, here we can uh, mark the terminal as active. If we mark it here as not active, it will display out of error uh, message. Not now, I would have to save uh, the configuration on the very end. But if you click it uh, here, if you uncheck it, the server will refuse to talk to the terminal, which will result in a message on the terminal error no internet. Here you can choose the notification policy, that's where we set the, all the SMSs, emails, etc. POS we will not cover in this, uh, in this uh, tutorial, store also we will not check. LO balance check is, 
is enabling this option this option where the customer can scan the QR code of the Bitcoin address and get the balance so you can switch it off uh, mostly the mostly the wallets nowadays they have uh, different different address for every transaction so it might uh, confuse customers because they they will have in wallet uh, I don't know 500 bucks but uh, when they scan the new new address it will display them zero but it's handy in places where where you work with the paper wallets uh, here are, we have another options one is uh, for example don't accept cash if you don't have enough supply which means that the machine will refuse to accept the cash if it if the server will respond to the terminal that you don't have enough bitcoins as an ATM operator in your wallet in your Bitcoin wallet or you don't have enough uh, euros on your Bitcoin exchange so this this uh, this will prevent you from selling bitcoins to people and uh, if you actually if you don't have uh, this checked on and uh, you don't have enough bitcoins uh, on in your wallet for example on the server uh, it will result in an error in a transaction error somebody will put in the cash it will let him because because there this is not checked it will let him insert cash and transaction will fail the customer will call you and tell you oh I inserted the cash uh, give me my bitcoins yes so of course you can go then and send him bitcoins from the exchange but you will be most likely buying buying them f for different price for than for which uh, the customer bought them so you might lose money on that so I recommend you to click on this also uh, you can allow the the customer to receive the receipts on the very end and by email or SMS so this is uh, good when you don't have a printer and BATM2 doesn't have a printer and also you can enable customers to receive uh, bitcoins by email or SMS if they choose by SMS they receive the private key in the SMS in case of email they, they will be presented with the unique password on the screen of the ATM and after that they will receive an email with the zip file in the attachment encrypted by that password and the zip attachment which is uh, easy to open with WinRAR for example uh, that contains the private key, the address, the QR code etc but it's quite complicated for the users we have it because one of the customers one of the Bitcoin ATM operators they wanted it but I recommend you to close it because it's quite complicated and the new new users uh, they might be confused with that okay so skins uh, I already said you can set up set your own skins on the on the terminal so you can put their different pictures so your corporate logo corporate colors etc languages you can set up your own language this is the default one when customer will come to the machine this will this will be it will be in English here you can specify which languages you want to offer to customer you can add more uh, languages but uh, and after that he can choose from the languages on the screen I'll show that so you can see that uh, he can I don't know if, if that is visible let me put it up uh, uh, for example Italian Italiano okay so every time the the ATM goes back to the screensaver the uh, the language will reset to English for example okay here cryptocurrency uh, the currencies here we set up that uh, in which currencies we want ATM to work uh, right now I have here check crown but we can put here USD uh, we can also also for some combinations it is possible to accept even even two currencies at the same time uh, for example euro and Czech crown uh, 
but you may have to make sure that you have also the corresponding firmware loaded in the bill acceptor uh, bill acceptor here there is separate video which describes how you upload the firmware remotely to the machine uh, for the for the bill com uh, currency fiat currency combination which you need okay here here we can add multiple cryptocurrencies for the simplicity for the simplicity we will add here right now only bitcoin uh, okay so when we add more for example dodge uh, 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 or litecoin we have to set up here the cryptocurrency setting so let's go with just BTC so here for BTC we, ha we have here right now only one configuration let's look at that I'll click on view so this cryptocurrency is with bitcoins we can set up here which currency unit we want to use what will be the cash currency or the fiat currency for which this minimal am transaction amount applies so for example in US you don't want to make the transactions for Bitcoin uh, for example for just one dollar right you probably want to make at least ten dollar transaction or twenty dollar transaction so you can set set up here that uh, the minimum minimum transaction will be let's say twenty dollars uh, and uh, this will result in uh, in uh, the fact that first banknote which customer inserts has to be at least twenty dollars he can insert twenty dollars and then he can put uh, I don't know one dollar two dollars there more but the first banknote has to be the minimum transaction uh, you can also enable the discount code uh, here we will test uh, this button is for testing uh, the following uh, following settings the cryptocurrency settings can be used for multiple machines at the same time for example you can have this uh, setting for BATM3 and BATM2 at the same time that's why it's buy and sell part here uh, the buy part is uh, for the cash to crypto direction and sell is from the crypto to cash uh, it's always the buy when we say buy it's always from the customer perspective they always say when they call you they will say I tried to buy Bitcoin so so this is the point of view here we set up where the price will be taken from so for example price of the Bitcoin so let's say we want to use Kraken Kraken and uh, Kraken has multiple uh, markets so we will take the price from the USD market on the exchange and here we can set up the hot wallet uh, right now when you receive the machine you have it set up for the demo wallet that's why the why the test on the machine when we were buying uh, bitcoins went uh, fine without actually configuring anything we will configure this uh, wallet in a few seconds uh, but i will first want to uh, explain the other settings uh, we can also set up in the same time exchange bitcoin exchange and here we set up the uh, bitcoin ex uh, sorry the buy exchange strategy and the strategy defines and there are multiple strategies defines how we are actually gonna distribute the bitcoins so for example with the exchange strategy number zero we will just send bitcoins from the hot wallet to customer that's option number zero with option number one the server will purchase the bitcoins on the on the exchange and it will send directly those bitcoins to the customer to the end customer from the exchange not all the exchanges uh, support this option for example bitstamp supports it kraken doesn't support it uh, there are more of uh, the options uh, 
customer ask us uh, to add more uh, different options based on what what their practice is you find uh, the one which suits you more for example number three is the one which we recommend but for the demo right now let's go with just the uh, wallet maybe I should explain what number three is so number three will do following it will send end customer the coins from a hot wallet and then it will go to the Bitcoin exchange purchase the very same uh, amount of Bitcoins and it will send them uh, to the hot wallet to basically to refill it this will enable you to have to this will enable the end customer to see immediately uh, that he is getting the bitcoins in uh, I don't know three seconds he'll see it on his uh, Bitcoin wallet as opposed to an uh, option for example buy purchase on uh, coins on exchange and send them directly from the exchange this for example this option is not that fast sometimes it takes uh, four minutes five minutes for exchange to send those coins to a customer here you can uh, you can set up also a fixed transaction fee and uh, buy profit so for example we want to make five percent five percent profit on each transaction and uh, and uh, we will do let's say one dollar or in our case uh, it's check round so ten check rounds plus five percent so it will it will every time somebody will buy the bitcoins it will charge him 10 check crowns plus 5% of what he inserted right so so the exchange so it's the calculation is that the ATM server will take price of the bitcoin on the on the exchange for example, there is one Bitcoin is uh, 1,000 or 2,000 USD. It will re uh, it will convert that to check crown, and after that it will uh, it will multiply that by 1.05, which is the buy profit, and that's the and that's how you get the exchange rate, and that's the exchange rate which is displayed on the machine. So the profit is calculated into the exchange rate and uh, basically when, when customer buys the bitcoins he gets 5% less of the bitcoins uh, than you are buying it from. So you as an ATM operator you always find 5% more cash in the ATM than you, than you uh, spent on the bitcoin exchange or which you spent for buying bitcoins. Uh, and on the end of the day, you take out those that cash from the machine, and uh, you either get somebody to sell you the bitcoins, or you put place the cash into the bank and you wire it on the exchange, and you leave uh, the USD or euros there uh, for next uh, next transactions. The selling part is uh, a little bit more complicated. I will not cover it in this video. I, uh, it's already long video uh, and most of the customers they buy just one way machines so I want to keep it simple uh, here here we can run the test uh, on each rate source so for example let's uh, let's save uh, our new setting we changed it uh, to Kraken right okay so let's wait until it saves okay so we see here summary 5% plus 10 check crowns uh, let's uh, run a test on uh, the exchange rate for, on the rate source on the BTC rate source buy okay so now the Bitcoin is really down it's 1922 USD uh, it's uh, July uh, 16th it's we are approaching the user activated soft fork the August 1st so that's why there is sentiment on the market I don't want to give any predictions here in this video so let's set up the hot wallet 
So for a hot wallet, you can you have here multiple options. For example, the Bitcoin Core. For for example, when you are running the uh, the Bitcoin Core on your server. So here you in protocol you specify HTTP or HTTPS based on what you have there. Username is RPC user I, I think as a default one. Some password for the RPC. The port I forgot what that is but it's RPC port in the Bitcoin Core configuration. Uh, and the account name you can you can you don't have to provide. There is support for multiple accounts but uh, uh, I, I think it's sufficient if you provide just a port no semicolon after that okay so but uh, but for the simplicity and this is what I recommend to all of the customers is to use block block.io wallet and here you have to specify just API key pin and priority API key I will show you how to get that pin also and the priority so priority can be either low, medium or high. I recommend you to put in the low priority. So how to get uh, the API key? We have to create a wallet on Block.io first. Let's do that now. Block.io Let's sign up. Our email address is support at generalbytes.com Password. Remember your password. So for us it will be Remember that the password is something else than the pin. Okay? sign up okay so there are multiple multiple options but I recommend you to go with the free plan it's enough to have hundred wallet addresses per network three requests per second uh, I recommend you to to go with the current plan you can always uh, spend more money on a different one let's skip that and let's go so now we have to choose our pin and that's uh, something which you can you should write somewhere down because because if you forget the pin you are screwed you you will not get uh, any bitcoins out from the wallet so I'll set for testing purposes I'll set one two three one two three one two three Okay, so I hope you will get you will set much smarter password than I do. One two three, one two three, one two three. Not password, but the pin. Okay, so let's set the secret pin. Okay. Okay, so yeah, actually this is a backup. So yes, I recommend you also to write this down and uh, also with the pin and if you lose this and pin you will have no bitcoins okay I saved this information I wrote it down and let's click on OK if some so as you can see right now we have balance zero bitcoins so uh, uh, and uh, this is our Bitcoin address it's a multi-stick uh, Bitcoin address uh, we can see the QR code if you want to send bitcoins to, th to the that address uh, you can click here and send the bitcoins to this QR code uh, this is actually what I'll do now so so we can talk while while I'm sending their coins Okay, wait a second. Let me see if I have some coins. Yeah, so this should be sufficient. So I'll scan the 
the QR code I'm scanning the QR code now and I will send her I don't know uh, maybe 1000 check crowns is uh, for demo yeah demo for demo I'll, I'll send her less let's say 300 and I will set the higher higher fee so that uh, that we get get it there faster okay seems like uh, seems like we we send the coins to a to a wallet okay oh we we see here uh, zero zero six five five is pending so it's it's not yet confirmed and uh, later on it will get into the balance you can see that uh, it requires at least three network confirmations uh, to get on the wallet uh, to get into the balance so let's uh, so now, now let's uh, let's get the uh, the Bitcoin network to work meanwhile we can set up the the connection between the server and uh, and the uh, wallet so let's take uh, let's take a step back. Let's see here. API key it is here for the Bitcoin. We will take for the Bitcoin. We are setting up now the Bitcoin. Uh, if you will be playing with Litecoin, you will you will take the API key for Litecoin. But we are working with Bitcoin now. So I copy it into clipboard. The API key for for Bitcoin. I paste it here. Semicolon pin one two three one two three one two three semicolon and the uh, transaction priority which we set low. Okay, so that should be it. Let's save it. Uh, let's view it again. And let's test our configuration. So test hot wallet buy, right? This is test hot wallet buy. Hot wallet buy. Yes. Okay, so we can see that the test was successful. It knows our Bitcoin address and it's zero Bitcoin balance. Uh, you see that it's the same same address uh, as here. Okay, sometimes you can you can save time then you run all of the tests, uh, but since we we configure just a wallet and rate source, the other tests uh, will fail. Okay, okay, you see it's uh yeah, the the self part uh, failed. Anyway, so let's let's set the cell so not Bitfinex, but uh, let's set it on on also on Bitstamp, the Euro Market, for example. E U R. Okay, and let's save it. So now we have a couple of minutes. So uh, we have to give uh, give Bitcoin Network time to. To do the, the transactions, uh, to to confirm the, uh, our transaction. Uh, let me copy this. Let's click on coin. Cz. Paste it here. You see that the transaction is not yet confirmed. We can see in check crowns, for example. So I sent there 285 check crowns. Bitcoin price is really going down. Okay, and I paid uh, almost one dollar or more than one dollar on uh, on the mining fee, which should be more than sufficient. Okay, so let's take a break, or uh, yeah, because it might take uh, it might take uh, one hour or something. So let's uh, let's wait.
Okay, so our transaction uh, has now three confirmations. Let's uh, take a look on block IO. We see the balance now not being pending, but it's already in balance. Uh, perfect. So let's go to the terminal. Let's go to crypto settings. Let's also check uh, if the server sees that balance. Okay, we run the test hot wallet buy. And we can see that on this address it sees the 00655. Perfect. So I think we are good to go to test uh, to do the real transaction on the terminal. Let me get some cash. Okay, so buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin wallet. You show the QR code. Oh, sorry. We click uh, buy Bitcoins. Now we scan the QR code. Okay, insert cash. Okay, 100, we should get 002002 by bitcoins. And now it went to the wallet and it should send uh, to the. Okay, so now we received the uh, bitcoins. Let's see here, 400 inserted in total, here is a shortcut to transactions, we see here buy transactions, now it's green, uh, we see that uh, we receive 0002 to this address, let's take a look at the address, yes it's pending now. Uh, we can take a look on our block IO wallet. Let's refresh. We can see that uh, now we moved uh, uh, 0002. So, so you can see this is what customer gets, and plus we had to spend this as a fee, uh, which is quite low. Anyway, so this was easy. Let's uh, see more details over here. Uh, let's do the okay. So let's uh, see the counters. We see them as 400, 400. It's okay. So congratulations. Now let's go over the other settings. Uh, uh, the explanation of them, and then uh, then we can get on more advanced uh, things. So here, uh, here we covered the crypto settings. Uh, we didn't cover in crypto settings how to set up uh, Bitcoin exchange. Uh, that uh, will be s covered in separate video. I'll, I'll record how to set up Kraken exchange, how to set up Bitstamp exchange. Uh, here uh, is uh, the custom strings uh, section. Uh, here you set uh, various strings, uh, for example this one is a support phone, so if transaction fails it's gonna display this phone number on the screen. Let's uh, put there plus one or we can, we are in US, blah blah blah, uh, for example this is our support number. Uh, this is how many minutes it takes for customer or t for the ATM operator to register the customer on the server for example we will cover that in uh, we will cover that in the KYC ML but you can set up KYC ML in a way that the customer has to be approved by the ATM operator so that's uh, that's currently not uh, so that's uh, for example you can inform customer that uh, it takes 15 minutes 
here is the list of supported uh, wallets uh, for the for the Android and for the iPhone. Supported, I mean uh, recommended. Let me show you. Uh, maybe I'll turn on the light. Is it better? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, so let's click on buy bitcoins, and now you are supposed to. Now you are supposed to uh, scan the bitcoin address, but you can click on I don't have a wallet, and uh, ATM will recommend you two uh, two wallets which you can install into your phone. This is uh, Mycelium. This is the URL which you saw on the screen. This is a blockchain wallet uh, for iPhone. So you can go and you can install it in the App Store. Just uh, customer has to scan the QR code. Okay. Let me. I think it's uh, blinking a little bit, so I'll turn off the light. And uh, I'll take out the shades. Should be better now. It's uh, I don't know why. Like anyway. So that was uh, that that was these uh, recommended wallets also when customers are buying the coins via SMS you can uh, or sorry when the customer want to receive by SMS uh, this is the template for that this is the template for this terms and conditions you can you can write here for example make sure that you send Going address to yourself and to make sure that you always send Bitcoin to address that you have on your control of your wife. You might be part, yeah, might be camped, for example. And if I put the exclamation mark on the beginning, it will require you to click or require the customer to click on on the on the I agree button. I'll show it in a second. Uh, this alternative welcome message and alternative screensaver message those are uh, this message and this message uh, that's not uh, visible too much uh, I'll, I'll put here something uh, welcome to YouTube and uh, here I put a sleeping. You can put there in the name of your company, or it's up to, really up to you. Let's save the configuration. And uh, so now the configuration got saved, and after 15 minutes, uh, sorry, 15 seconds, is going to be deployed on the ATM. Uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, we can do here more things. So. Uh, before it gets uh, uh, before it gets uh, updated on the machine okay location I wanted to demonstrate how <coughs> what is the procedure if you want oh we, you see it's now sleeping and when I click on the screen it's now saying uh, welcome to YouTube okay so here we can, uh, if you want to move a machine to another location, so this is uh, this is the procedure how you should do it. 
uh, we go to locations we create a new location let's call it uh, I don't know shop uh, shop I don't know uh, JC Penny somewhere street name I don't know country let's say that it's gonna be in US now so we will put there United States state Florida uh, zip code I don't know we let's leave it empty now contact person will be me okay time zone we have to set the time zone of the machine uh, and based on the time zone and the country the machine will actually know where it is so based on that for example when somebody will be filling in the phone number uh, the customers which don't fill the country code uh, those are that uh, the country code will be automatically added because uh, we filled in here country United States and the time zone will be probably New York so that's uh, how you how we do it and let's move the let's move the pin to the to the exact location so this GPS position is uh, is important if you want to export uh, the location data into into coin team radar I highly recommend everybody to to put uh, his uh, I don't know maybe maybe it's in Bradenton somewhere you place it uh, I don't know here for example I don't know okay let's let's say that uh, GC Penny is here I don't think it's there but uh, anyway so so this GPS position will be get exported into coin ATM radar here you can put also short description like uh, mark found this not found but mark manages this location that's it okay let's save it we have a new location let's go to terminal our terminal let's move it uh, move it uh, to a new location Previous location is Parallel Impulse, new location is JCPenney, uh, new location from date, let's say from today, okay, move, okay, perfect, and we save that. And now if we go here and we click, no, not here, but when we click on, on here, show history it's gonna show us from which date to which date it was in Paralympolis then it was moved to to shop JC Penny okay let's go on the other settings special configuration that uh, is something which, uh, which you don't want to know or you don't have to know but basically here if you put here some magic word uh, the machine may start to do some custom things for example there are some in in some jurisdictions like in Switzerland they want machine to work in another way for example they don't want uh, they don't want people to scan the QR code they just want uh, the paper walls to be printed out so they can put here like I don't know Swiss uh, franc and it does something else. It's a different word, but I don't remember any. Anyway, so let's continue on here. Cash collection mode. So right now we have a none, which means uh, that uh, the machine will not track moving of the cash box. And but uh, what I recommend you to is uh, go with the option number two. And which means that if you pull out the cash box from the machine, the machine will actually ask you if you are removing the cash from the machine. 
and if you do answer yes it will cre clear the counters let, let, let's do that now uh, I will click on modify and now it's again it takes 15 seconds or something like that to uh, to to happen so let me show you here the counters so right now the long counter says this and short counter says this let's remove the cash box taking out the cash which we inserted there which is 400 and on the ATM I have a message I hope it's readable okay it's not so very readable but uh, it's saying uh, are you sure that you want to clear counters yes I'm sure and count, it says counters cleared. Uh, if you want to enter the administration now, you have to click on scan QR code and then you scan the administration code. But we are not going to do that now. So I'll put all back in. Okay, so let's uh, refresh the page. We see that buy-in is now zero. When you click on counters, the long counters are st staying. As I mentioned, uh, they they continue on as long as the server works, and the short counters are now cleared. And because we had the cash collection enabled, uh, we can click on cash and see the cash collection. And here we can see that on at this date and that time we collected out of the machine 400 check crowns. The contents of the cash box was two banknotes of value 100, which is together this. Short counters at that time were this, and long counters at that time uh, had this value. Okay. Let me just check uh, something. Okay. So that was the cash collection. Other settings. Uh, you can you can limit, uh, for example, that uh, per per address, people will be able to buy only for let's say twenty five thousand uh, dollars or one thousand dollars. In some jurisdiction, uh, this is required, so that's why we have it. Uh, we are approaching the KYC ML part. Uh, this one I will skip for now and let's jump uh, to public settings. So when you have the machine at your location, I recommend you to publish the information on CoinATM Radar, the information that your machine exists. Uh, so you go to CoinATM Radar and uh, this is the web page which tracks all of the ATMs and customers who want to visit the ATM they look on this web page so you really want to have your ATM listed here so how do you add it add your ATM here here submit new ATM okay and you send uh, how does it work how does it work? Yeah, you send email or you can send it via contact form. 
please make sure that you mention that you have a general a general bytes uh, yeah you have to submit a new location make sure that you that you mention that you have a general bytes machine and mention your serial number after that go back to the settings and click on publish to HQ so this will make uh, this will sh this will cause that uh, you you will be sending us data about your ATM for example but but you can limit which data you want to share with us for example you want to share just the location and not the price on the ATM or not the terminal fees probably you want to share the ter prices because that's uh, something what Cognitive Radar is also able to display to the customers and they want to see the price before they visit uh, the location. Here you can also specify the name, the location, maybe some, maybe some more detailed information about the, about the ATM position within a uh, shopping mall, for example. Okay, so uh, since we are not yet ready, I'll unpublish that. But make sure that you publish that uh, after you are done. Let's move on to KYC AML stuff. As you could see, as you as you could see on the ATM, uh, we were able to to send bitcoins without providing any personal information about ourselves. So we bought bitcoin, and bitcoin ATM operator didn't know anything about us. Here are some limits under which is it, which it is uh, possible. So, for example, if we do transaction higher than 100 check crowns, uh, it will not be possible. And for example, we could do only, let's say, 10 transactions per hour for 100 crowns. So you can limit it here. But some operators they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to allow the anonymous transactions at all so so they they can put here zero and no anonymous transactions will be allowed but for for the example for the for us uh, let's leave there zero and let's enable the KYC ML uh, first we need to decide how we are going to how we want to track the customers so the easiest way how to track the limits of each customer is to track the limits or or the track the transactions made by some phone number. So, so I'll I'll choose my preferred number nine, which is cell phone plus selfie plus two two ID card, which means two sides of the ID card. Selfie is uh, means that the customer will do a photo. It will not be a, a cell phone SMS. Is that customer has to fill in the phone number and he is gonna receive one time password which he has to retype uh, on the machine. This way we the ATM knows that he has the uh, possession of the of the ATM or the owner has the possession of the uh, of the sorry the end customer has access to this phone number and on this phone number we will track the limits the transactions so for example the anonymous transactions without the phone number will be just up to 0 to 100 from 100 to 500 dollars for example uh, will be that he has to provide at least phone number and for the for the registered customers I'll allow them let's say here I will put in one thousand dollars and here three thousand dollars I'll allow them to do multiple transactions maybe maybe just one and uh, per day maybe just one per month uh, maybe fifteen thousand maybe per day more like something like I don't know six thousand US dollars okay so let's let's save that again once we save this it takes a little bit of time 
to to get this uh, in effect on the ATM. Okay. Let's let's uh, take put uh, our nickname here. Uh, JCP like JC Penny. Uh, JCP like JC Penny. And we click on modify. Okay, so you can see here that uh, immediately it has a shortcut JCP. Okay, so now let's let's try to do a transaction. I'll I'll put camera closer to the uh, closer to the uh, screen so we see more more on the screen. Yeah, because this is this is not uh, so much visible. Okay, so let's uh, let's see the KYC ML. I moved the camera a little bit, uh, so we see the whole screen, uh, and hopefully it's it will be also readable. So here, when we click on the screen, we click on buy bitcoins. Uh, this is the terms and conditions which we filled in on the. On the server, we can scroll with them, but we we put uh, right now we have their short text, so it doesn't scroll. But uh, you could even scroll with that. Click on I agree, and here we have less than 1,000. That's the anonymous option. The between 100 and 1,000 check crowns, or more than 1,000 check crowns. Let's go with the the anonymous we know, right? So this you scan the uh, QR code of your Bitcoin wallet immediately, but let's go with the. Okay, I agree with the middle option. Uh, privacy notice. Yes, the phone number will be collected. I'll click on I agree. I'll put in my phone number, but since uh, we said that the location is in the uh, in the US, I have to put the country code. Four two zero six. Sorry, zero six oh three five seven two five two five. Okay, so now I should receive on one of my phones. I should receive SMS. Okay, I received it. It's five zero two nine six five zero two nine six. Okay. Perfect. Now I can scan the address, insert the cash, and uh, that transaction will be tracked under my phone number. Also, for US and for Canada, uh, we are you can enable on server that uh, it will automat the server will automatically scan for the name. It will query the name of the person owning that phone number in the, the database in the phone phone providers uh, database this is paid service it costs uh, 13 cents but it can find out who the person is the name last name where where it lives etc okay so but uh, let's go and explain the third option this is more than 1000 check crowns that we set up you have to be registered okay so not yet but i would like to be registered Okay, so you will write mobile phone, ID card, photo of your face. Okay, phone number again. Uh oh, oh, I have to provide the country code again because I specified on server that the machine is in US. If uh, I would be in US or I would have the US phone number, I would just uh, type the US phone number without the country code. Okay. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the SMS. Oh, 
Okay, so it's zero eight, zero eight, four one, seven. Okay, next uh, thing which we should do is uh, scan the ID card. I'll use my. I'll use uh, uh, some some different card as a. Let's see. Uh, my driving license, so uh, my expired driving license. So I put uh, put the document here, and I'll click on take photo. I'll check uh, if the photo is readable. I'll click on yes. Thank you. Now the other side of the document, okay. I'll, I'll scan the other side of the document. Take a photo. Okay, yes. In US it would be it would be the uh the driving license also. Okay, so now I'm asked to make a selfie photo but I have to smile. Okay. Perfect and now now the ATM operator receives the, the SMS that somebody wants to sign up and uh and the and customer is informed that it's gonna take 15 minutes. Those 15 minutes are the ones which we were filling in custom strings. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look on the server. On server, we can go to identities. Okay, so I'll click on everything ident identities. My identity is actually quite old. Uh, it's from 2014 I'm in the system so that's uh, why you will see more data about me but basically here I can scan I can see that I'm awaiting registration so I'll register myself this is the SMS text which cust end customer will receive okay document number I'll take a look on the scan document which is document number is this Okay, name Karel Kiyoski. Okay, I'll scan myself against the uh, terrorist watch list. Uh, I passed. Uh, perfect. I'm not a terrorist. Okay, here we, uh, you can see, I can set the VIP discounts uh, here. I can say, let's say that I will have 50% off the current fee on the buy side so if I have 5% profit uh, Cara will pay just 2.5% uh, of fee so here are the other uh, other photos which we made and we hit uh, submit and now I should be in the registered category okay so that's uh, that's KYC AML. Uh, let me see if there is something more I wanted to cover. No, I don't think uh, there is more I, I would like to cover. Maybe a look and feel we might uh, cover in the next video. But that's really details, discounts. Maybe I can this. Um, maybe I can uh, present the discounts. Uh, so, for example, let's say that I have, we run campaign where the uh, discount code will be uh, something like there is a conference. Conference is called HCPP one two thousand seventeen. Let's issue the hundred discount codes. Uh, the discount will be fifty percent. 50% on the on the fee on the bypass bypass uh, sell we will put also 50% uh, okay we will put uh, we will say that uh, this will be for example only only to let's say on the first million check crowns after that we will 
we will start charging uh, or this discount code will be inactive okay so valid from the conference starts uh, I don't know in October uh, October 2000 I, I think October 6 I think is the uh, is the uh, conference uh, starting discount is active okay we click okay so there's some error blah 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 validity from validity to okay the conference ends on I think on the midnight I'll put here next day after okay I hit submit okay there is some error okay the problem is that the 2 is before fr from so I have to choose the October October Monday okay now we have this uh, uh, discount active uh, maybe I should uh, present you how to use it so let's let's change the date to to date so we can use it now okay 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 so let's uh, I uh, let me check that uh, we have the discounts uh, enabled. Oh, that's in crypto settings. Okay, we have the discounts allowed. Perfect, let's go to the ATM. Bitcoins, I agree, anonymously, or yeah, anonymously. Let's scan the address. Oh. Let's uh, scan the Bitcoin uh, wallet address now. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so here I can I can insert the the hundred chick crowns inside. Okay, so this is hundred chick crowns. So let's try another hundred chick crowns. But you will see that uh, you will notice uh, that uh, we, we for the anonymous we are allowed only up to hundred. You see, cash transaction uh, transaction cash limit exceeded. Okay, so for the anonymous transactions, we could go only up to 100. Let's enter our discount code. Discount code was uh, HCPP2017.